Welcome to this webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about how to use the new Adobe Express mobile app. And it's going to be so much fun because I've already seen it in the background work. So I'm excited that you're here. My name is Aretha Simons. I get to be the webinar producer here at TechSoup. I'm having so much fun. I'm going to show you how you can engage today. Uh, you know you on mute. And Jordan is so cool. She can do the Q&A. She can do the chat. She can do so many things. So we want to see all your questions. Go ahead and put them in the chat or the Q&A section. We are going to send this video with the video replay. Um, there won't be any slides because she's doing a live demo. So you can watch the video over and over. Um, there's going to be a survey that's going to pop up. We would love to know what other things you want to learn about Adobe. So let us know. It's just three simple questions. And um, if you answer that, that would be great. If you need the closed caption, go ahead and type on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. I'm going to move out the way so you guys could have all the fun with Jordan. Welcome, Jordan. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Let me go ahead and share this. Um, hi, everyone. If you've joined a TechSoup Adobe uh, webinar in the past, you may have seen me before. <laughs> I'm Jordan Danae Ellis. I've been at Adobe for the past two and a half years. And before that, I ran my own business that I, it was mostly online. I started an Etsy shop back in 2011 uh, without a background in running a business or in marketing or anything like that. So I'm very used to marketing myself and making all of the graphics and all of the online content that I need um, as a one person show. So if anyone actually let me know um, how big your organizations are, if anyone else is doing all the marketing themselves, because I can relate to that. Um, I am extremely available for questions, even after the webinar, if you're watching a replay, that is what I do at Adobe when I'm not doing presentations, I'm helping folks mostly with Adobe Express, but I have coworkers who are experts in all of our products. So I saw uh, some people are using Illustrator and Photoshop and uh, Premiere. So if you have questions about other Adobe things too, I might not be able to answer them today live, but you can always contact me um, at Jordan Danae Ellis or through LinkedIn, through my email. All of that is at this QR code. And I am happy to help with anything that I possibly can. Um, so with that, Thanks everyone for answering four part-time employees, a small nonprofit with one part-time employee volunteers, all volunteers. Yep. So hopefully what I'm showing today can help you make the online content you need faster, help you uh, get more people to know about your nonprofit. And I'm really excited to dive into this. So if you haven't used Adobe Express yet, uh, uh, it's very easy, which is great. It's set up to be something that you can just dive into without necessarily having a design or a background in design. I don't have a formalized background in design. I didn't go to art school. Everything I learned is just by doing things and from working here at Adobe. Um, and Adobe Express is really set up to be able to make online content that all looks cohesive, that's well-branded, that looks good and will help you elevate your business or organization or nonprofit. So you can do things like design from templates. We'll set up brand kits. Uh, you can even do things like animation and video without necessarily like maybe you've never done any of those before and don't want to dive into the more intense animation and video programs. Uh, you can do all of that in Express. You can share and collaborate with your team. And then I'll show how to like set it all up for social and even directly schedule. Adobe Express is available on desktop. There's nothing to download like Photoshop and Illustrator where you have to download um, a product. You can just go to express.adobe.com, which I'm going to do in just a second. Um, but we have a mobile app that's brand new that I'm going to be focusing on today and that you can download if you want. So whether using an iPhone or Android, you can just search Adobe Express in your app store um, and the brand new no mobile app should be there. It's not currently available on tablets. So just wanted to call that out. We're working on that, but if you're using an iPad, um, it's not available at the moment, but you can get it on desktop or phone. So if you wanna work along with me today, you can definitely do that. Um, David's asking if there is an offline app and at the moment, no, it's all connected. Um, it's all online. So 
there is not a way to like work on a plane without Wi-Fi at the moment, but we've been asked that before. So I'm curious to see uh, what will come of that. This is a little bit about Adobe Express's partnership with TechSoup. So if you are <laughs> a TechSoup partner, then you can, um, you can get Adobe Express Premium for free. So there is a free version of Adobe Express that anyone can use. There's a premium version with access to more things and all of your registered nonprofits have access to that, which means all of our premium templates, over 20,000 licensed fonts from the Adobe Fonts Library, a bunch of Adobe stock photos, video, and music, and up to 10 users per license. Um, so with that, I wanna dive in to, <laughs> not my last slide yet. I wanna dive in to, this is just to let you know if you miss this and, and are looking for it later, if you just search Adobe Express for nonprofits, this is where you'll come. So it has all of the different uh, features that you'll get, more information, all of the like frequently asked questions that we have, and you can just hit register now for free, which will take you to TechSoup, and then you can get Adobe Express for free. So I just wanted to let you all know how to get access to that. Um, you can try going to the website on iPad and see if that works. I know that we're working on an app for iPad, so I'm not totally sure how that is going in the meantime, but you can try that and see if that'll work. Um, and here we have the Adobe Express desktop version. I've gone through this before in past webinars, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this today because we're going to do a lot on mobile, but I just wanted to show it off in case anyone hasn't seen Adobe Express before um, and also show you how you can work seamlessly between desktop and phone, whether it's just you, whether you're sharing with a team. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tricks for that. And please feel free to drop questions in the chat. I have chat open. Um, so some of you already are, which is great. I, uh, Jason's asking Chrome versus Safari. I believe Chrome is the better option. Um, it should work on both, but I always use Chrome. And I think that is, um, that is, I think the preferred browser. And Marie is asking the advantages of Express over some competitors. One of the biggest is that it integrates with the full Adobe Creative Cloud. So if you're working with a team that's using like Photoshop or Illustrator, um, you can uh, you can sync with like Creative Cloud libraries. Um, our templates are also designed by the Adobe design team. So they're really beautiful and help you stand out in a way that like sometimes other templates kind of look the same. We have um, differentiated that way. Judy's asking about Firefox. I try it. I'm actually not 100% sure. I haven't tried Firefox in a while. Um, is Express included in the Creative Cloud All Apps plan? Yes, it is. So if you already have the full Creative Cloud, then you have access to Adobe Express. And right here in the top, you can just uh, sign in with your Adobe ID and it'll sync with uh, all of your other products. Here you can see if you're logged in with a premium account. And if you really love Express and want more help, you can join our community where you can ask questions, you can see what other people are making, you can be in like the know about what's coming soon, what's coming next. And then the homepage here is really where you can start all of your projects. So this big plus sign, if you wanna make something from scratch, you can start that here. Uh, if you just wanna start from blank or any of these suggested sizes. Um, and we really do have a lot of templates. That's kind of the heart and soul of Express. You can search any of these different categories here or from the search bar, search up there. Adobe Express integrates with Adobe's generative AI tool called Firefly, which we could talk a lot more about that. I'm not gonna deep dive into generative AI today, but something that I think is really important before mentioning it at all is Adobe's stance on AI. So all of our Firefly, which is our generative AI, 
Our model is trained on open source images and Adobe stock uh, that we have the rights to. And the reason it's done that way is that it's designed to be commercially safe. So we're not scraping the rest of the internet. You can't use certain IP, like if you type in a Disney character or a certain artist, nothing should come up because it's not searching on things that we don't have the rights to, like specific companies or artists work. So I just wanted to say that right at the front, if you want to play with the generative AI tools in Firefly, which I'll show some on mobile, you can be, uh, you don't have to worry because it's all designed to be commercially safe. So you can use it for your nonprofit or your organization or your business. Uh, and we can always talk more about that later. If you have more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat, but we could talk all day <laughs> about generative AI. Um, next up, these quick actions are a huge time saver if you just need to do something fast. So for example, if you need to make a QR code, it's super easy right here on the homepage. You can drop a link here, change the style, change the color, all of that fun stuff. You can do things like convert a movie to a GIF, resize an image. And if you go over to view all, the, they'll be sorted. So if you know you want to look at just for video, you can find things like caption video, crop video, uh, all the things logo maker are all, um, here in the quick actions and they're going to be on mobile as well. And then, uh, as we scroll down, just kind of deep diving into AI more things, um, add-ons are basically like when we partner with other companies to add something, uh, into your express project. And this is the one thing for now that's only available on desktop and not on mobile. So I wanted to call this out. These are super helpful. You can access them here from the homepage and within your projects. So if you want to like sync with Google Photos or Dropbox, if you want to use the TikTok Creative Assistant to get ideas for the types of videos you make, um, there are all kinds of cool things like you can make charts. Uh, some of my favorites are things like uh, there's like a color blindness check. You can preview what it looks like, what your post looks like on social, contrast checkers. There are tons of really fun add-ons. And once uh, you choose what you want, they'll be right here in kind of your favorites in your add-ons. So they're easy to access. So with that, um, a few more things I wanted to show before jumping over to mobile, but your stuff is where all of your projects live. And maybe most importantly, your brands here are where you can set up brands uh, or creative cloud libraries, which helps all of your designs look really cohesive. So I created um, some sample nonprofit brands. This is like an after school STEM club. So you can add logos. I just made this with the Adobe Express logo maker, add in some colors, add in your fonts here. And then when you go to make projects, you can make sure they're using the same colors, the same fonts, so everything looks cohesive and you can share with your team here. You can just type in uh, whoever's on your team, their email, and you can share that. And I'll show a couple others. This is more of like a built out small business. So tons of logos, tons of colors. You can save templates here. You can even save assets like photos from a photo shoot. And let's do one more. This is my little brand that I just have like a couple templates, a couple assets, some colors. So whether you have a full blown brand kit with like, you know, all of your fonts, all different versions of your logos, or whether you have something a little more bare bones, you can set this up for you and your team so that everything looks the same. And this is available on your phone as well. So my favorite way to use the mobile app uh, I'm actually really curious how many people here like creating on their phone. I think it's really amazing to have access to all of this in my pocket, but I don't know if it's my age or I'm just used to like my big desktop screen. I really like starting projects on my computer so I can kind of see it all laid out and then moving over to my phone to like add things that are only available on my phone. Uh, so I'm curious how you all feel about that, but I'm going to start a project that I want to pick up on my phone. So for example, um, I do a lot of events. I was just in London last week. 
and I want to make a recap video for it, but all of my video clips are on my phone and my photos are on my phone. And so instead of like syncing them with some sort of storage device or airdropping back and forth, which I used to do all the time, I'm going to set it up on desktop so that again, it's easier for me sometimes to set it up that way. And then I'm going to finish it on my phone. Um, okay. We have some agreement in the chat. So for, if you prefer to work on desktop, I'll show you my favorite way to start working. And then sometimes you just need to make edits on your phone. Like last night I was at an event and I realized I never made a post about it. So I had to really quickly like edit something together on my phone because I didn't have my computer with me. Um, we do both desktop for most projects, but phone on the go. Yeah. That's me, Lisa prefer to work on the laptop. I feel like I have more control. Yeah. I really like setting things up here uh, and then kind of editing or picking things up as we go. So I'm going to search all of our templates for vlog templates because I've seen these before and I know that I really like the way these look. I want a video that I can post on Instagram and TikTok. So I want like a vertical size. And I think I really like both of these but I think I'll go with this one and just click on the template I want, hit customize template. Um, and so I'm going to start this here and then move to mobile. So if anyone wants to work along with me, like I said, please feel free to download the app uh, desktop, prefer solely working on your phone. Perfect, cool. So this is the template that I have here. This is like, a coffee shop energy, which is not what I'm posting. So I want to switch a lot of this out. Um, so I know that this, uh, I want to change the title here to, I was at Adobe Max, our big conference. I'm just going to resize this a little bit by dragging the corner. And I have access to all of my um, different text options over here on the left. So I could change the font uh, right here. I can choose the brand kit that I want. So I'm going to go down to mine because this is for me. And I'll change the font here. And I think I want to bold it. It's maybe trying to load that. Let's see how this goes. So thinking about something. In the meantime, I'll edit this. There we go. Let's see if I can make this a little bolder. And then this was a London. So I'll update that. No exclamation point. And I'm going to change this font because that's not really working for me. Let's make this italic. Cool. That feels great. Let me make this a little smaller. So I can start editing, you know, the things that I already know I want to change. Like I know I want the text, what, what I want the text to be. And this, um, uh, this is now something that I need to go in and add the actual assets that I want to use, which are on my phone. So from here, I could do a couple things like make this into a template just to show you that if I go up into um, share, I could share this with my team from here. I could save it as a remixable template and something brand new that I wanted to call out for anyone uh, who is the designer side of your business and you want to share with your team, we do have a few different options now. So if I want to save this to a library, I could change the name. Uh, I'll save it to there. And we actually have style restrictions now that when you share the template, whoever you share it with can only use your colors, only use your fonts. You can toggle both or neither. So if you want to give that extra level of... Um, I guess, uh, what's it called? Restriction or like being sure that the template is going to look the way you want it to, even if you pass it on to other people on your team. That is a new thing that I think is super cool. I could also schedule this out to social media from here, which I'm not going to do because it's not ready yet. Um, but really quickly before we go to mobile, I will show from the homepage, you can go over to schedule to see our social media scheduler. I love using this and I am so thankful that you can schedule from your phone, but I really like looking at the calendar on my desktop so I can see it all laid out like this. I can move things around if I need to. 
I can uh, add things from my desktop or from an express project. So I just wanted to call out that like, if you like seeing your calendar big like this, you may like to look at it on desktop, but it'll sync between both. So with that, let's switch over to mobile. Uh, one second while I switch my share here. I want to share my phone now, which is perfect. Let me all know, or <laughs> let me know if you all can see this. Um, and the cool thing about Adobe Express's mobile app is that it looks really similar to our desktop, which is part of why I wanted to show you what it looks like on desktop first, so that if you have been using that, hopefully it'll be really easy to make the switch. Um, so we have our AI at the top, homepage, really similar setup, suggestions for templates, quick actions, call out to our scheduler, one thing navigation wise is that on the desktop app to see more options, it's going to be sliding over to the right. So for all of these to see more options here, and when we go actually into a project, um, everything kind of scrolls over. So I wanted to let you all know that navigation, navigationally, <laughs> if you're looking for more, that is where that would be. So I am going to pick up the project that I was working on, but first I actually want to show how to use one of my favorite of our AI tools on the phone, because this is something that I use for my photos all the time. So you can do things like, um, Sherry, yes, there is an update. If you are in your Adobe Express app and you've downloaded it before and it doesn't look like this, Feel free to like X out of it and re-download it or see if there's an update because this is the new version that syncs with desktop. So I highly recommend checking this out. So at the top here, we can do all types of things with um, our generative AI. Text to image means you can like generate an image, which you may want to do if you're looking for a specific type of photo and like can't find it in stock. Um, but this remove objects is one of my favorite things. So especially if you have like a photo shoot and there's something in the background that you wanna get rid of, you don't have to bring it to your computer, bring it into Photoshop. Um, and even if you aren't a photo retoucher, this is super simple and I'm gonna show you right now. So I just hit remove objects. I'm gonna go to photo library and let's go to my favorites album. I pulled this out. This is a photo that I took when I was in London, if I wanna do like a recap of my trip. And my coworker got up at 5.30 in the morning to go look at all of the places he wanted to go to and got all of these amazing photos with no people um, in the background. And that was awesome, but I didn't wanna get up at 5.30. I went in the middle of the afternoon and there were people everywhere. So over on the right here, these are actually my coworkers, but they're not like posing. <laughs> I don't really want them in this shot. So I can just brush out uh, the area that's a little big. Uh, I can change the brush size here because I want to get rid of this entire hole here too. Uh, let me actually reset that and make that a little smaller. So I'm, you know, clearly not doing like a great job here, but that's okay. I'm just brushing out my coworkers and this like big pole that really aren't helping my photo at all. And I'm going to hit remove. So by doing that and where this little like holographic uh, is happening, it is figuring out what would be um, in the background here and giving me three different options. So I can choose which of these I like. And I think uh, this one feels good to me. So I'm going to keep it. And then I could do the same thing uh, again if I wanted. So I can go back into remove object. And if I want maybe uh, remove object, if I want to brush out this couple here and this bicyclist and can do the same thing. Um, so again, this is a feature that came to Photoshop earlier. 
And it's really powerful. And the fact that it's in Adobe Express on the mobile app, <laughs> this didn't work quite as well. Just swapped it out with different folks. So let me, uh, let me discard that. Try one more time. I'm going to, oops, <laughs> I just hit remove background. Sorry, that is not what I wanted. But you can remove the background too that easily, which is super cool. Except that's the opposite and only left the people that I don't want in here. Uh, let me try one at a time. Let me see if I can pull this out. Let's get rid of this couple and try again. Sandra's asking, does uploading your images add them to Adobe's library? Do we surrender copyright of our images to Adobe if we upload them? Um, no to that. This is so funny. It's just giving me a different bicyclist for this. So I'm going to keep those. Um, yeah, I'm just using my finger. I don't have a stylus or anything. Um, you could, if you wanted to, that would make it a little easier. So you can... Sandra, you can upload your images to your Creative Cloud library if you want, but uploading an image into Express or any Adobe product does not upload it into any sort of like public library, and it's not uploading it into anything that um, like our AI is training on. So it's not giving access to your photos to anyone else in any kind of way. And you do not surrender a copyright of your images to Adobe if you upload them. So like if you use them here, um, if you uploaded them like to be used as stock photos, like through that program, that's different. But if you're just using them, nope, they're yours and no one else can see them or anything. So just wanted to show that off. Um, you know, it's still AI. So sometimes it gets it really right. Sometimes it doesn't or, you know, you have to play with it a little bit, but that's a really cool thing that's right in your phone. I use it for my travel photos all the time because it just really helps uh, me have better photos because I don't like waking up early enough to take photos without any extra people in them. So, um, oh, one other thing that I wanted to call out, our quick actions are here on mobile as well. And something that I use all the time is this caption video here because you just upload your video, you'll get a caption. You can edit it if it doesn't caption it quite right. You can edit the way it looks, uh, choose the fonts and colors and style. And this is something that I think is so great that is on mobile because I tend to create my videos on mobile. And then I used to, again, have to like bring them over to my computer to do the caption. So this is great if you want to make one video and then share it in a lot of places and just caption it once. Um, instead of using like the native caption in different programs. So that is that. Uh, I have access to my brands here as well. So everything that I was showing on the computer, I have access to here. So my logos are here, my saved templates. And in your stuff is the project that I was just working on. So here's what I started on my computer. I can play it and it'll still be here. And this isn't the video that I want at all. So once I'm in a project, the screen will change a little bit. And these are all of the editing options. So default at the bottom is like the background color. Right here are my layers. So if I want to see all my layers the way I can on desktop, you're probably familiar if you use like Photoshop or Illustrator. Um, what layers are. I can just move those around. And if I hit more at the bottom, I can resize, which I'll do. Um, you can edit the page name, you can add a new scene, and I'll do all of that stuff. Just wanted to kind of set the navigation. If I want my layers out of the way, I can just X them out and then bring them back in with the layers button at the bottom. And then because this is a video uh, right here to the bottom right, will pop open my video timeline. I said for the homepage, that navigation um, is a lot of scrolling to the right, and that's the same in, in the editing window. So if you can't find something, try scrolling over it, it may be there. So for example, if I click on text here, there are more options by scrolling to the right. So I can add a hyperlink to the text, I can change the opacity, I can change the layout, outline it, 
all of this different stuff. Um, oh, this is fun. That's cool. You can add an outline. Uh, I was, let me see if I can, I'm going to add my outline and then go over to and make my text uh, with this white line with um, a line through it. I can make the text uh, transparent and just keep the outline, which is super fun. I love that. And now I'm going to go over to spacing and just kind of increase the letter spacing a little bit. Um, oops, that's line spacing, letter spacing, so that it's not touching. That looks cool. And make it a little smaller now that I change this. So, you know, you can make edits on the go, which is great if I notice something that I didn't notice that I wanted to change on my computer. Um, connecting to social media networks, except on Twitter, we have two channels or X, and it seems to want to link to one thing. So, Adrian, there's a new update that you can now sync with premium access. You can now sync up to three accounts per social media platform. So you should be able to sync both. Um, so try that out and let me know if you, if I'm understanding uh, your question correctly, let me know if you wanted to sync to, or uh, if you're asking something else, let me know if I'm understanding you. Okay. So I updated my text here and now I want to replace this video. So by clicking on the video, now my options here have changed and I have different video editing options. So I can do different effects, volume, speed, I can crop it, remove the background on video, which is very fun, different types of adjustments. Um, and if I scroll all the way over, I can find delete and replace. So I want to replace this with default, it's giving me um, Adobe stock video, which is really nice. If you want like B-roll or something that you haven't taken, um, especially if you want like nature or just kind of some video of like people walking outside or in a park or in a forest or in a city, um, that is a really nice way to use Adobe stock video. It's all licensed already. Judy's asking if there's a max size max for images or video. There may be. Um, if you try to upload something massive, you may get a notification that the file is too big. I don't know off the top of my head what that would be. Um, I think there is a video length limit that's that's pretty long. Um, but you'll you'll get a notification that it's it's too big or too long if you are trying to upload something that won't work. Um, okay, but I wanna upload my own video from my device here. So I'm gonna go back to my photo library and I want this video, I think. Let's play it to make sure. Yeah, that's me getting to the conference. So I'm going to upload that. And let's see, it's uploading here. And by clicking in down here to my video template, I can see that this clip is longer, or sorry, I can see the, that the scene is longer than my video clip. So I, um, if I play this, then there's a lot of blank uh, with just like the background here. So I'm going to click on it and trim this to be closer to the length of my actual clip here. Let's see if I got it. Oh, you know what? It's sped up as well. Let me, I can tell this video is going faster, I think. Let me um, click on the video here and go down to speed. Yes, it's at 200%. So I want this closer to the actual speed. There we go. And now this video is about the length I want it to be. So you can do all of those edits here on your phone. Um, tighten this up a little bit so we don't have that blank. 
Okay, great. By clicking on my video clip, <clears throat> I can see all of these things like volume. I don't know if I have volume. I definitely want this muted because I'd have no idea. It'll just be people talking in a crowd. Um, by going into speed, I can make it slower or faster. Lots of times I want to speed up a clip. So it's really nice to have this here, which I think I'll do in the next, uh, the next scene that I'm going to add. I could crop it if I needed to, and it can also drag it from the corners here. And like I said, I could remove the background. So if I had a video clip that I really wanted a different background or wanted to add my own video background, I could do that. And there's all types of different adjustments like <clears throat> brightness, shadows, saturation, all the types of like visual uh, video edits you want. And so now I have scene one that I'm feeling pretty good about. And I want to add a second scene here. So if I hit this plus sign, it'll give me like a blank, uh, which I could use and just upload my own things. But I want to actually click into this clip and hit duplicate because I like all of the settings that are already on this first clip and I don't want to start from scratch. So I'm going to hit duplicate. And now I have a part two, but I don't actually need everything the same on this second clip. I don't need uh, this text here. So I'm going to scroll over or I can also press down, um, hold down on the text and then I'll see some options here so I can delete that way. I'm going to delete this. And now I want to replace this with a different video clip. So I'm going to scroll over, replace again, upload from device, and I'm going to upload a second clip here. And this one is nine seconds long. So I'm going to do the opposite of what I did before. And I'm going to make this one faster. So I want to go into speed here. Oh, also, let me go to volume. Muted that. That's great. I want to go to speed. And I think I can make this one double time. And I actually want the second part of the clip more than the first. So I'm going to pull this over a little bit until it is showing the part that I want. There we go. And I'll go ahead and drag this out to the end. Okay, let's hit play and see what this looks like. This is my coworker and I presenting in London last week. And with this uh, plus sign in the middle of my two clips here, I can either add a scene or I can add a transition. Um, there aren't a ton of transitions right now. We're adding more, but I'll do like, I'll do a little dissolve. Okay, so let's see what this looks like all together. Hit play. Cool. Now I have a clip that I can post on TikTok or Instagram, and I did it all from my phone. If I want to add anything else, like I can go into the plus here and add some audio. Um, there, there are tons of audio tracks here. You can upload your own uh, with this purple button. You can do a voiceover. So if you're making like a tutorial or a day in the life and you want to do a voiceover, you can. Um, you can also just click into any of these Adobe Stock audio clips and they're all going to be uh, pre-licensed for you. So you don't have to worry about anything being flagged if you post it on social. These are all um, these are all able to be used publicly. Let's see. There's actually, we used a certain clip um, in the presentation we were doing. So I'm going to search. Looks like I froze my. Looks like I froze my um keyboard here. One second. Oh, sorry. Sometimes if this does happen, uh, I don't. I don't know if this is my phone or the app, but I'm just gonna restart that and try again. So if anything does freeze on you, uh, or if you see a bug. Up here next to my profile photo, this little beaker is where you can either submit 
like an idea of something that you want. So if there's something in the app that you think we're missing or uh, at the bottom here, you can report a bug. So something like that happens to you, you can report it right there. I'm gonna go back to my project, <clears throat> excuse me, and try to search again for this audio clip. I want like an upbeat song. And I have played with these a lot. So I know that the one I want is this one and I'll add it. So I'm not sure if I'm sharing audio with my settings or not, but <clears throat> now you can see that there is an audio track at the bottom. Um, so you can see like the videos on the top, the audios at the bottom. And now I have my post. So if I wanted to share this with someone else on my team, especially if I wanted to maybe share it with my co-presenter here and then get him to add, you know, his own video clips, I can go up to the uh, airplane here. I can invite someone else to this project. Uh, I can share it that way. I can download it right here. And because this is a video, there will be uh, three different video sizes. So if I want it smaller or larger, I can um, choose that right here. But I actually wanna share this out to social. So if I go up to, again, this paper airplane, I can hit schedule in the second row and that will open our social media scheduler. So we were talking about this a little bit. <clears throat> this is uh, where you can set up your own social accounts. So I have all of mine synced right here and I'm only using one set of social accounts. Um, but if you have multiple, so if you have like, maybe you're running social for two different organizations or multiple teams or like your your organization has maybe like a spin-off side project and you have multiple things that you want to include, you can add more channels here or more profiles here and then just click into the ones that you want. So I want Instagram and TikTok. And um, if I wanted to add more, I can just hit open connections here, but I'm that's good for me. And so now for Instagram, I have three different options. It can be a post, it can be a reel or a story. This actually can't be a post because it's a vertical video that the dimensions are like not set up to be a post. So I can make it a reel. And then this is something I love. This is brand new. There's an AI caption generator built into our social calendar now. So if you get stuck writing, which I do all the time, instead of sitting here and trying to figure out what to write, you can give it a prompt. Like I'll say, had a great time in London at Adobe Max last week. Um, check out the replay of our keynote presentation. I honestly <laughs> would just write that as a caption, but if I want it to be a little more interesting, I can hit generate. And now I have some options. I can generate a brand new caption. I can have it rewrite what I have, and then I can shorten or lengthen it. So I'll just ask it to generate a new caption for me. Something that's really cool about this too, is that depending on the social channels that I choose, it will uh, create a caption that's optimized for that. So if I had chosen X, this would be too long and it would give me a shorter caption that isn't too long for X. Um, so we have some emojis here, we have some hashtags. If I hit uh, this little like go again button, it'll try again. And if I insert it, then I can go in and make any edits that I want. So I actually only want uh, these two hashtags. And I think I just added a W by accident. Let me go ahead and delete that. If I wanted to like tweak the caption at all to make it more in my brand voice, I could do that. But at least gives me something to start with, which I think is really great. On Instagram, you can add a first comment or add like a link if you want. And there are some options here for TikTok. Preview is something that I love uh, because it lets you see what this will look like on the different channels. So I can preview on Instagram. 
on TikTok and uh I can tell <laughs> I forgot that I didn't choose a cover image and I don't love this. So something that's really nice about that too um is that if I go up to the three dots here, I can edit my real cover, which I'm really glad that I previewed it to remember that this is a much better cover than what I default had. Uh, so that's really helpful to preview it to make sure it looks the way you want. And now I'm going to save this as a draft, but you could just get it ready to schedule go into the calendar here. So maybe I'll choose tomorrow. I can edit the time and then I will add it as a draft to my calendar. So now that it, it, when it's done adding, I can show what it looks like on my calendar, which is the same one that I'll hit view and calendar, the same calendar that I saw on desktop. So like this is the post I made yesterday. This is the post that I have right now. I can see that it's going out by clicking on the days I can see like what is available. Um, and then if I want to edit it at all, I can go in here and make any edits that I need. So again, I prefer building out my calendar on desktop, but I love that I can schedule from my phone because if I'm not at my laptop or I'm like realize I need to make an edit to something that I already scheduled, but I'm on the go, that happens all the time. I'll realize I need to change like, a detail in the caption or a product that I thought was coming out isn't actually coming out on the day I thought so I can come in and make all of those edits. And Chrissy is asking uh, if Express can automatically resize and it can. So let me go into, let's do it on this uh, post I made yesterday for an event we had in Reno. And if I go, um, I can see there are two pages here. If I go to the three dots in the top or uh, more here at the bottom, there's a resize option. So clicking on that, we'll open up our resize panel. And then I have all of these different presets. If there's a specific custom size, I can uh, edit that at the top and I can choose like pixels, inches, centimeters, whatever I need. Or we have a lot of default options here for social media. So it's already a square, but maybe I want it to be um, TikTok size, Instagram story size, uh, Pinterest size, let's do YouTube thumbnail and flyer poster just to see. And then if I hit duplicate and resize, it will take uh, my post and resize it to all of these different sizes which is a huge time saver. And you can do that on desktop and your phone. Um, and then it just saves you a bunch of time. And if you need to edit anything, like I think this isn't quite filled in, I can come in and just fill this out to be uh, the size I need it to be and like move these around a little bit because it like spread the text out a little. But it, it even if you go in and edit it, it still saves a lot of time giving you everything you need um, all of these different projects in one place. So with that, um, that's the main overview of everything in Adobe Express on desktop and how to use it on mobile. I'm really happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, and like I said, I'll bring up my, I'll bring up my social again so that anyone who has questions after, or I saw a few people asking about a replay. Um, if you're watching it not live, then I'm super happy to answer any questions. So here's my little thank you slide. I just saw actually, I think there's a Q and A question. Yes. Um, question about the security on your device flagging Adobe Express is untrusted. I'm actually not sure. I have not seen that happen yet. So um, I would maybe ping our customer support 
to ask that question um, because they may know more than I do. Uh, so if you go to Adobe, there's like a support chat um, because I have never seen that come up before. So I'm sorry, I don't have the answer to that. Um, any other questions, anyone? I can show off anything that I may have missed also. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see that I didn't show, I'm happy to. And again, if you have any questions later or start, um, you know, start playing around with things and then have some questions. All right, is there a simple way to change out a background on an image? Yes. Let me see. Is this, can you all see my screen yes. still? Okay, perfect. So uh, let me just do something like, I'll upload, I went to the plus here, I'll upload a photo that I have. Um, this is just one of my default profile pictures. <laughs> okay, we'll use that one. Uh, and I can choose like, I'll keep it the original aspect ratio, but I could change it if I wanted. So now that I'm here, you can do this on mobile as well. I'm just sharing my desktop screen right now. If I click on this image here, there are a bunch of photo options here on the left. And if I hit remove background, then uh, Express is going to remove the background on this photo. If I need to edit it at all, I can, but this actually looks pretty good. And then now I can make the background anything I want. So if I just wanna make it like a certain color, I can do that right here. Or uh, if I want to make it like a texture, we have a lot of options um, over here. So if I go into elements, there's a whole backgrounds tab that I could search. So if I want it to be space themed or flowers, um, I could upload my own photo if I had a specific photo. And here's the really fun thing. It could actually be a video. So if I go, I can, you know, make it an Adobe stock photo and then just add this as the page background. Um, and I can go into videos as well. So let's do, let's find something sparkly. Yeah, and I could drag that out or just hit fill video and with the layers, move that around. And now I have a video background, which is very fun. Um, so yes, there that is a simple way. Um, is the account based on how many licenses can you grant a team member or volunteer access? So uh, in TechSoup, when you sign up this way, you'll get access to 10 licenses for your team. So you can grant those to your team. And the second question, does Express have text effects similar to the options in Adobe Stock? I'm not totally sure what the Adobe Stock text effects are, but we have some, let me know if this is what you're asking, Chrissy. So if you go just right into text, we have these like text mockups. So um, these are like things you can just pull in and then edit as you want. <laughs> I'm not the world's best mom or anyone's mom, um, but you can do things like this and then like edit it. Uh, with that, we also have like, I'll just say, uh, I'll type in Adobe Express. Um, if you wanna do something like, you, we can make this in a circle. Wow, that's so big. Or an arch like this. Um, we have AI text effects as well. So if you wanted to do something like make this look like a disco ball, um, you can, oh, it's already down here. You can generate um, text effects uh, with generative AI if that is what you were thinking. So I'm, and you get four different options like always. Um, so I'm not sure, let me know if any of this Okay, that is what you need, great. So I'll do a little disco ball, Adobe Express crown. 
and I will put that behind me. <laughs> and the fun thing with this too is like um, this, you can edit like any other text. So if I need this to stand out a little more, I can go in and add like a shadow and you can really play with things. Um, when our staff have birthdays, I usually create an editable PDF for staff to enter a greeting and sign and it's forwarded onto everyone else. Can I make a birthday card and express that everyone can input? Yeah, we do that on our team. Um, so for example, this is going to be a little wild, but if I wanted this to say happy birthday instead, this could be like page one. Um, maybe I want to resize this to make it more of a birthday card size. Um, so yeah, you can create a card like this and then you can make it whatever you want. And when you're doing it in Adobe Express, you can actually make it a video or make it animated as well. Um, so the, say this is page one, I can go up and add uh, page two, as many pages as I want. You can see them all right here. So then someone else could come in and add their own like photos, add their own text, um, you know, edit, edit it however they want, which is really fun because when you go up to either share or this invite button, you can just invite whoever you want to have access to it. And then they can all come in um, and edit the same project. So you can have a bunch of different birthday messages. So yes, you definitely can. And I think that is great. Uh, Dwayne's asking if there's a time limit to the length of video you create. I am not 100% sure there was, um, there was at one point, like a, when we were in beta, there was a shorter time limit that has been extended but I am not sure the answer to that. I can try to find an answer for you. Um, I've uploaded up to like 30 minutes, so it's longer than that, but probably if you tried to do like several hours, uh, it would either be really slow or maybe um, let you know that that would not work. Um, Linda is looking for Adobe Express on Play Store. Is is that for tablets or mobile? Because right now there isn't a tablet uh, version of Adobe Express app. There's only for phones. So I'm not sure if that would be why. Um, if you still can't find it, feel free to message me and I will try to find out what's going on there. Um, Chrissy's asking how to make a mobile design to add a photo from your phone, but then hand it off to the desktop version. So you don't have to do anything. If you're logged into the same account here, um, on both, it'll just be there. So for example, everything that I just edited on my phone here with this video is just here back on desktop. So it's, it's here again. Um, and so if I wanted to make any changes on my computer, I can. So you don't have to do anything special. It'll just sync to both at the same time. And I think that's, I think that's our time. Um, if there are any questions, yeah, that you still have, feel free to, again, um, find me online. Happy, happy to answer any questions. Uh, Linda, there will be an iPad version. It's just not available yet, but we're working on it. So maybe we can do that in a future webinar when that is available. Cool. Yeah. Feel free to ping me. Um, if you have any questions, thank you all so much for being here and for all the great questions. I hope this was helpful. Um, we don't have like a specific cadence for Adobe Express trainings, but there are a lot of videos on the Adobe Express YouTube and also mine. So if you want to just like find out more about Adobe Express in the meantime, you can definitely search there. And yeah, thank you all so much. We'll, we'll do another one. Uh, the, the recap of this will be sent out and then we'll do 
another one coming up. We're just talking about when the date of that should be. So thanks everyone. Have a really good, I forget what day of the week it is. Have a really good Wednesday. <laughs> thank you, Jordan. Bye everybody. Yeah, thank you. Bye.